such good singing, boys and girls. You know what singing does? Singing makes you happy. Singing gives you joy. And I'm so glad that we can have the joy. As a matter of fact, we can have the joy of the Lord. And that's what this song talks about a little bit. It talks about the joy of the Lord. Now, I'll tell you, I'm going to sing it, and then I'm going to have you sing it with me, and we're going to do some fun stuff, too, okay? So here it goes. Now, listen, here we go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. singing a song like this, I just catch myself smiling. So I need you to help me out. Sing it with me. Here we go. On that first verse, sing it, okay? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy my fine young sir. How are you doing today? Hi, um, are you Mr. Ezekiel? Why, yes I am. You must be Jackson. Well, how did you know my name? I have heard many of my fellow prophets speaking about you, and God told me that you would be coming to see me very soon. Really? That's so cool. So you speak directly with God all the time? I do. Well, I heard that God chooses to speak to his prophets in mysterious ways. Uh, what is the way that he speaks to you? Does he send fire down from heaven or cause animals to speak to you? Or, or did he talk to you from a burning bush like Moses? No, nothing of those things, Jackson. God speaks to me through visions. You, you mean like a daydream? Because I have a lot of those. Like the one time I was sitting under a tree in my backyard and I saw this ant trying to build this anthill and I began to see myself as a really small creature and I got to make the anthill with him. And he was my friend. But then my mom called me for dinner and I realized it was just my imagination. Is that what you mean by a vision? In a way, yes. But in my visions, I saw things that no man ever saw before. And I even saw things that I had trouble describing to the Israelite people when I had to tell them what God wanted me to say to them. Well, what would be hard to describe to people? 
Well, my first very vision from God was seeing the throne of God removed from the temple in Jerusalem by winged creatures. What's so hard about telling people about birds that took away the throne of God? All people should understand that. Well, I didn't say anything about the creature being a bird. Well, what other creature flies? This was a heavenly creature that no man had seen before me. This creature had the likeness of, of a man, but it had four faces. One face was a man, one face was an eagle, the other a lion, and one of an ox. And these creatures had four wheels and giant wings. And as they began to fly, the wheels were turning in different directions, and the throne of God began to go out of the temple. Wow, that's quite a creature. I don't know if I would have remembered all those details when it came to telling the people. When God asks you to tell someone something or to do something to warn someone, then he will give you the strength to give the people an accurate description of what he wants presented to them. Well, what kind of vision does this mean? Because you have me completely lost. It sounds kind of like a nightmare. It's, it's kind of scary. Well, this vision meant that one day, soon God would be removing himself from the temple to be with his people in Babylon, and that the temple would one day be destroyed because of idolatry, and that his chosen people had chosen to do worship idols instead of worshiping the one true God. Oh, oh yes. Last week I visited Jeremiah, and he told me that the people worshiped other gods, which is called idolatry. Oh, that's really a scary place to be in. It really can be. But we are still asked to follow God and trust that what he wants to show us will help us to have the strength to serve him and to help turn people towards him. Well, that's so true. But I do have another question for you. Sure, Jackson. What can I answer for you? Well, do I do? what do I do when I'm given a really strange task to do and I feel like I'll be too strange doing it. What do you consider a strange task, Jackson? Well, you see, my grandpa asked me to help him chase away the crows in his field. At first it sounded like fun, but the other day it got really hard to scare them away. I think that they have gotten used to seeing me, so I'm not scary anymore. I decided that I should quit, but my mom said that I should stick to it. What do you think that I should do? I believe also that you need to stick to it. If I stopped trying to reach the Israelites for God, then some of them would have never turned back to serving the one true God. But God only sent you to visions, or to see visions, to tell them, right? Actually, Jackson, God would ask me to do some pretty strange things as well. Like what? First, God asked me to build a little city and show it being attacked. But they didn't listen. And then God asked me to cut off all my hair. Part of it I burned, and the other part I cut up with a knife, and the third part I threw up in the wind and it blew away. These were pictures of ways that God was going to judge Israel. Well, those things do seem strange, uh, but nothing as bad as dressing like a scarecrow like I had to and running through the fields yelling at birds. Well, I wasn't finished with the story, Jackson. God also had me lie on my left side for 390 days. Then God asked me to lay on my right side for 40 days. Finally, he asked me to make myself spoiled food and eat it in front of the people. Wow, that is some pretty crazy stuff. So you ended up lying down for 430 days? And that's over a year of lying on your sides. Uh, why did God want you to do that? The length of days that I was laying down on my sides represented the amount of time that his people had sinned. He wanted me to feel the weight of their sin on my body. Wow, the weight of their sin, that sounds a lot like Jesus, what he went through when he was dying on the cross. That's right, Jackson. But the difference is Jesus took on all sin for all people for all times. The weight on his shoulders would have been so painful to bear for just one man. And he did it to be the final sacrifice for his people so that we can all go to heaven one day when we die. God is a caring father. He sure is, Jackson. But wait, you said that God didn't give up on his people. So what happened after you did all those crazy things? Did people immediately turn back to God? Actually, the people still failed to see the grace of God. And the city of Jerusalem was taken over, just like God had warned them from the very beginning. 
But wasn't Jerusalem the capital of their nation? What happened to the Israelites after Jerusalem fell? God showed me a vision that gave his people hope for the future. Well, what was that vision? It must have been pretty cool. It sure was. In my vision, God showed me a valley of dry bones. And those bones then took on flesh. And they started to look like you and me? Wow, I wish I could have seen that. Exactly. But the people that were created didn't breathe yet. Then God came down out of heaven and gave them the breath of life. And those bodies began to walk around and worship God right there in that valley. Wow. And what did this vision mean? It meant that one day God would recreate his people and they would once again praise him and he would come back to them. He also showed me visions of all the evil nations in the world being defeated so that everyone can worship the one true God. Wow, that's amazing. And finally, God showed me a new temple being built and God's throne coming back. This showed us that one day God would come back to dwell with his people in the restored land that he created. Jesus will someday be the king of the whole world when he returns to set up his whole kingdom. Wow, I can't wait for that day, Mr. Ezekiel. Your story has really inspired me to go home and keep telling Grandpa to keep his field safe so that one day uh, they'll be ready for harvesting. I will also be ready and willing to do whatever God wants me to do as I grow up, even if it seems hard. That sounds like the best plan, Jackson. Well, maybe I can take a lesson from the Valley of Bones to catch their attention. Well, thank you for letting us join you today and you telling us all about these strange things God wanted you to do. And thanks for joining us, kids, and we'll see everybody next week. Bye-bye. Bones